Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this special video where we're going to take a look at someone who is kind of mysterious. Uh, mysterious to uh, most of us because he's only just really getting national television exposure um, and it is James Ellsworth. Now James Ellsworth is uh, king of the jobbers if you will. He is somebody who uh, had a match against Braun Strowman a few weeks ago, uh, several weeks ago now actually, um, uh, and uh, he's an enhancement talent. He was booked to lose that match. Uh, he lost it in a squash match um, but he made such an impact on the uh, WWE Universe they actually got him to come back. Uh, not only did they get him to come back, they put him in the main event of SmackDown uh, the other week. And so it was meant to be uh, Dean Ambrose and John Cena versus AJ Styles and James Ellsworth. Uh, now, The Miz took offence to this. The Miz uh, feels that he is main event, uh, which I can kind of understand. And uh, as Ellsworth is coming out, uh, the Miz jumps him, beats him up, humiliates him, and then throws him to one side. I suppose the concern is that it served a purpose and it, you know, made you hate the Miz uh, even more. Um, and uh, the concern is that they might not do anything else with James Ellsworth. I think though that the response to him has been so positive, and uh, the the Twitter reaction has been so loud uh, and uh, you know the support has been unanimous that they can't afford not to there's absolutely money on the table for WWE with this guy and so fingers crossed we do see James Ellsworth again a lot of people want him to get an intercontinental uh, title match against The Miz not sure if WWE would go that far uh, but that would be very very cool um, and clearly, you know, the, Daniel Bryan has a relationship with James Ellsworth. You know, Bryan was the one that said, I've got, I've got a partner for you when he was talking to AJ Styles. And it was Bryan that introduced James Ellsworth. Bryan as well spoke about him on Talking Smack. Um, and uh, I think Daniel Bryan is the kind of person that will push to use James Ellsworth again. Uh, so fingers crossed, we do see the man, the legend, uh, on our TV screens again sometime soon. This video though um, is to talk a little bit more about him. I, I really wanted to find out more about him. I didn't want to just tell you stuff that you'd already seen. Um, so I found out a few facts and figures by trawling the internet um, and also I'd urge that you listen to the uh, Talk Is Jericho podcast. Got a lot of information off there um, and it's a fascinating listen. You know Jericho seems quite genuine when he talks about his respect for James Ellsworth and uh, how he feels he did such a good job with that one opportunity that he was given. Um, and not only that, not only was there the match, um, but also James Ellsworth got a promo, uh, actually got to kind of speak before that Braun Strowman segment. Um, and he came out with a fantastic uh, catchphrase and that was, that was, any man with two fists has a fighting chance. Um, and it's kind of like a catchphrase that uh, is being used now and uh, it's kind of there's t-shirts that have it on Jericho asked would he mind saying it and it's kind of it's kind of becoming a thing um, and it's wicked to see I can tell you that James Ellsworth is married he's got two kids uh, and he's been wrestling for 14 years he was trained by Axel Rotten Axel Rotten in the 90s a massive ECW star um, sadly Axel Rotten passed away earlier this year in February aged 44 um, and uh, you know that's, that was a big big loss to the kind of wrestling industry um, and uh, yeah it was just really cool that someone that kind of respected it was cool to find out that he had he had trained James Ellsworth uh, not only that, they'd you know hung out. They'd been friends. Uh, I think I think James Ellsworth on Talk Is Jericho talks about going to an Offspring show um, with uh, Axel Rotten. Um, James Ellsworth's actually got a tattoo of like a skull, uh, but it's the uh, band logo, if you will, um, of the Offspring, a band that he's been a fan of since he was eighteen, and he's. Uh, 31 now I believe um, so that kind of tells you how long Ellsworth's been 
wrestling for you know clearly he's been doing this since a teenager actually performing he says he wrestles about 100 times a year uh, roughly uh, twice a week um, and also he's a promoter uh, adrenaline championship wrestling he's been uh, promoting for those guys uh, for a while now it's kind of his company he's taken control of it um, and uh yeah, he says that they put on about 20 shows a year, uh, 14 in the Maryland kind of area. Yeah, he's booked people like Lita, Sonny, Bret Hart, Gangrel, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. He actually fought against Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, he tells a great story where Jake's selling for him and uh, kind of as payback um, at the end of the match. He hits the DDT on James Ellsworth and then he puts the snake's head down James Ellsworth's uh, trunks. Uh, which uh, rightfully James said freaked him out. Um, but yeah, you know, he's got quite a few of these kind of road stories, which you would have if you wrestled like a hundred times a year. Um, but he's, as I said, you know, worked with a lot of the greats. He has worked as a jobber for WWE before, working a lot of dark matches if ever they're in the area. Um, and also he said he was a rosebud uh, for Adam Rose um, and he often dressed up as the cheeseburger. I have tried to find pictures of James Ellsworth uh, dressed as the cheeseburger, but uh, I couldn't seem to find any on the internet at the moment. I'm sure some will certainly uh, come out though as his popularity uh, increases. Um, he says that, uh, well, he was the first man to face Braun Strowman. He was the first jobber that we'd seen in a long time. And also he's got a very distinctive look. Uh, he doesn't have much of a chin. Um, and uh, that's that's just as a result of his parents being that way. He said his parents didn't have uh, uh, chins either. And so uh, he thanks his parents for helping put him over as a result of that. All throughout the kind of um, Talk is Jericho interview, and also a lot of the stuff that I've re read about him, you know, he does an interview, I believe, on Reddit. And uh, there's quite a lot of wrestling publications that do interviews with him. He just comes across as the most down-to-earth, nicest guy. Um, it, you kind of I, I really want to see him be a success or, you know, achieve further success. Um, definitely, he's already been successful by appearing on Monday Night Raw and on SmackDown Live. You know, he's kind of... Um, already lived some of his dreams. He said actually that he's watched Raw every week since 1993 when it debuted. You know, he is a real down to earth wrestling fan. Um, he said that uh, he didn't expect all the memes and the internet support, it means a lot to him. Um, and uh, he's more used to wrestling in front of 150 people. Uh, he has been a two time tag team champ and the cruiserweight champion and he said that normally before all of this obviously he wrestles now as James Ellsworth but before all of this he used to wrestle as pretty Jimmy Dean and his uh, tag team partner was called Adam Ugly and uh, their tag team name was Pretty Ugly um, which I thought was pretty cool um, so uh, yeah he's, he's uh, worked a lot on the indie scene um, he was talking about some of his favourites. We said his favourite band is, is The Offspring. Favourite film is Rocky. Um, favourite superstars of the past, people like The Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man Randy Savage. He said he used to root for the heels. And a lot of his work uh, before all of this, he was a heel. Um, but now he's just getting booked as a face, as you can imagine. Um, he says that, uh, you know, Jericho is uh, one of the people that really inspired him. And apparently Jer Jericho called him up after that Braun Strowman segment, uh, said that he had done a really good job. Um, and Vince actually uh, congratulated him as well. So it does show that, you know, even very small opportunities are still opportunities. Um, and uh, he definitely took that opportunity with both hands. Um, and uh, he said that Ellsworth's not his real surname, Ellsworth's actually his middle name. Uh, Jericho was saying that it would make just a cool name, you know, like Batista uh, or Cesaro or Seamus. You could have Ellsworth. Um, I could kind of see that. I think I can see that. I think I think it is quite a distinctive name. He doesn't need the James part. Um, but, you know, that's maybe for the future. Uh, we'll have to see as to what, you know, he... Uh, he gets booked to do. Interestingly, uh, he said that he was originally booked for Backlash, Raw and Smackdown, um, but the Backlash and Raw deals kind of fell through and so he uh, ended up just appearing on 
SmackDown. Not that he was bothered, um, but uh, yeah, well, honoured, of course he was. But yeah, you know, for someone that's been wrestling for 14 years, he's still in his early 30s. You know, he's still got a good five, six years ahead of him, if not longer. I mean, AJ Styles is 39. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I really do hope we see more of James Ellsworth. He's, uh, he comes across like a great guy, like a real wrestling fan. And uh, it's just an, it's an exciting time, you know, to see uh, enhancement talents return. And uh, who knows, we might have the next one, two, three kid on our hands. Awesome, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed that slight insight into James Ellsworth's life. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Please give the video a like if you liked it um, and hit that subscribe button because I'll have a lot more videos coming up for you soon. Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.